Good morning, good evening, good day, and good afternoon. It is me, Leo Brown, and I'm on here with something different this time. Um, oh my goodness, I don't know where to start. Well, first of all, happy Monday. I cannot believe that we're already about to go into February. February is tomorrow. So my lovely sugar bears, I hope you guys are having a great start of the week thus far. And if you can, like, comment, subscribe, and share, please, uh, regarding this, because it makes it easier for me to be in the algorithms of YouTube. Okay, so this isn't a psychic's perspective. This is something very different for me. It's actually been on my mind since this man's um, transition. I've been wanting to talk about it. I just couldn't find the words to to use, you know, to describe how I felt. So I'm going to read something to you guys and, excuse me, and then I'm going to come with my commentary, just a second, let me find it. Okay, here we go. Um, it says, I'm bothered with, the, with all the outpouring of love that people are showing for Andre Leon Talley. Not because he wasn't deserving of it. The man was very deserving of praise. No, it's because of the decades of playing the your black friend to a publication and editor that deemed a white, thin, and young the standard of beauty. Tally died loveless, fighting bankruptcy, facing, facing eviction, and feeling disposed of by people he made into millionaires. Alone, penniless, and nearly homeless. That is how this industry respected this man after he dedicated his entire life to it. Andre Leon Tally is only a success, a success story for people who think success is defined by where you sit at Fashion Week. The man worked himself into isolation, never finding a partner, spending years of his life selling a lifestyle that he himself could not afford. Tally's life is a lesson on how the fashion industry takes and takes until you have nothing else to give, then forgets you and moves on. His story is a reminder that any industry built around phrasing of wealth will treat even its most celebrated personalities as disposable as last season's H&M. It's a warning lesson for creatives entering into the fashion world to not lose sight of things that actually bring long-term happiness. Genuine relationships, finding love, finding community, building secure partnerships, and having the support system you need as you get closer to retirement. It's a reminder that an industry trained to always be looking for the next thing will soon forget you and move on, only remembering that you matter when you're gone. A cautionary tale to those without trying to find their space amongst those with too much. A reminder that when, you, when your pursuits are focused on the praise you receive, you begin to pay attention to the fee you'll have to pay for it. Anyway, rest in peace, Andre. You deserve a lot more than what you got. You were always nicer and we were interesting to speak to then Miss Anna. And this was um, a, I'm trying to remember, I, I wanna give the person credit. This was shared on um, social media. And I forgot the person who did it. If I can remember their name, I'll definitely try to like put it in, but it made me think. And I will be honest with y'all. I did not know a lot about Andre Leon Talley. And then what I did know, because I have a lot of New York friends who has either worked with Andre or they, or they knew of him or they ran into him, you know, things like that. And what I heard about Mr. Talley was not always the nicest. You know, I heard that he was actually not a nice person, but I started to do a little research, started to do a little deep dive into him and, you know, and, and watch interviews. And when I saw him on uh, Wendy, and I don't really, I'm not a big Wendy Williams fan, but when I watched him on the Wendy Williams show, I was like, oh my God, he's actually, he has a glow about him. He has a light in him. And I can understand not being the nicest person because you're in an industry that's so cutthroat. So I get that part. Um, I'm not saying that that's right, but I get kind of why he was probably like that. And unfortunately, I think for a lot of people who come of age in like the 1940s, the 50s, the 30s, even the 20s, they have kind of a, they don't mean to be, but they have a roughness to them. Like if you think about a, a Cicely Tyson or Diana Ross or uh, let me think, or Barbara Streisand, when you think of people like that, they're not mean for the sake of being mean, but they have a, a guardedness that is like, ah, you know what I mean? Even Dolly Parton to a point. Like, yeah, I'll let you in, but only so much. Um, and I'll be very honest. 
I identify with a lot. Like I identify with Andre, um, Andre Leon Talley. I identify in a lot of ways I am Andre. The only thing is I don't wear caftans. Well, let me take that back. At one point I used to wear caftans. <laughs> um, but I understand it. I'm from the South, like Andre. I am what I would call fat. You know, some people beg to differ. Um, I'm feminine. I'm flamboyant. You know what I mean? So I and I, and I am in an industry where you can be hot one minute and gone the next. And I think that's the one thing that, for me, being in this industry of entertainment, even though I am not where I'd like to be or where I think I should be, um, I can relate to that, to wanting to be that it girl or that it boy or, you, you know, wanting to sit, you know, be at Fashion Week and be with Anna Wintour and, you know, all of that. And just, in, and like that post said, I agree with them because it's like, wait a minute, what about when he was really going through it, when he was facing eviction, when he was facing bankruptcy, what did you do? You didn't do anything. And, you know, all his friends, you know, oh, I miss him. He was this, he was that. But were you really around him when he was really going through it? And to be honest, as somebody who is in their 40s, not saying they're 40 years old, that's not what I'm saying. But as someone who's getting older, I often think about that. I often think about, well, wait a minute. What about if I'm 50, 60, 70, 80? You know, if I live that long, you know what I mean? And I'm vital and everything. But what if I'm not? What if I'm really going through? Because he had health issues. He was severely overweight. Um, he lived alone. He lived isolated. Like, and just those things. Because here's the thing. A lot of us who are gay men, we don't think about that. We don't think about when we get 50, 60, 70 years old and how we're really going to want not only just a lover, but we're going to want community. We're going to want friends. We're going to want real genuine people around us. We're going to want, you know, uh, you know what I mean? Things to do. We're not going to want to sit up in the house. I mean, hell, the, 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 the pandemic has shown that. Let's be real. Like, think about it. We've been de dealing with this pandemic for two years. And what happened when they were doing the lockdown? People lost their mind. They lost their shit. You know, so in a lot of ways, it just makes me think about how we're so we're so youth oriented. We don't think about the 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 future enough. We don't like we don't think about the now. It's like, no, you need to think about that. Think about that when you 50, 60. 70, 80 years old, because what are you going to do when something really bad happens to you, okay? What are you going to do when your body shuts down? What are you going to do when, when, not saying that I'm willing that, that's not what I'm saying, but, you know, what are you going to do? Who can you call? You know what I mean? Who can you call upon? Like, I'm lucky in the sense that I have friends that I can call upon now, but let's just say that doesn't happen in the future. You don't know, so you always have to be prepared, and it made me just, it made me feel sorry for him, like, and not for him. Well, no, let me make that, let me, let me rephrase that. I don't, I don't feel sorry for him because I think he just did what he loved to do. Fashion was his passion, but I felt sorry that he was never able because of him wanting to be in that limelight, in that spotlight, in with the, the in crowd so bad that he was never able to form anything, any other relationships outside of that. He was never able to find a partner. He had lovers, because he admitted it himself. He slept with people and did his thing, but he never was able to build really genuine, concrete relationships. And unfortunately for a lot of Black gay men, and I'm, and I'm talking to my Black gay men on here, a lot of us don't know how to do that, because we're so focused on I gotta get it. I gotta get it. I gotta hustle. I gotta do it. And it's like, no, baby. Like, granny, yes, you need to hustle. Yes, you need to make your money. But what about bonding with somebody? Because trust me, money ain't gonna help you. Money is not gonna help you be, you know, it's not gonna kill your loneliness, baby. Trust and believe. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that you shouldn't make money. That's not because I don't think, but what you're saying, like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that there needs to be a balance, that there should be both. You should be able to hustle and make your money while at the same time, find a community that you fit in with. Um, you know, maintain genuine relationships. Take care of yourself, mind, body, spirit, 
you know, emotionally. That's important because, you know, we're thinking now, oh, you're in the prime of your life. Because I hear it all the time. You're in the prime. You're not old. You're in the prime of your life. And this, that. and that is true. I am in the prime and I accept it and I embrace it. But I always think about, well, what about when I'm 60? What about when I'm 70? What about when I'm 80? I always think about that because I'm thinking that's not too far apart. That's not too far behind me. You know what I'm saying? I'm always thinking about the future because I'm like, well, wait a minute. You know, everybody else around me is getting, you know, they're, they're, you know, I have friends that are 26 and 39 and they're moving on. They're doing their things with their lives. But then I'm thinking, well, what am I doing? You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it, Andre Leon Talley is definitely a cautionary tale. You know, because you want to make sure you have your, and I'm going to be real. Do I have my affairs in order? No, I don't. Not the way I should. But I am going to get there. You know what I'm saying? But it really made me think because I'm like, that could be me. I am Andre. I could be Andre Leon Talley in a minute. You know what I mean? And there are several Andre Leon Talley's in the world. You know, like granted, I'm not, I am in the entertainment business, but I'm not where I'd like to be. I'm not. I'll be the first one to tell you. Do I want to do TV? And I would love to do television in the form of a talk show. I love to do radio. I love radio and podcasting and things like that. Um, do I want to be rich? That'd be nice, you know, to, to be able to, to be financially, you know, have a, some financial freedom. But it's not about that for me. You know what I mean? That's why I don't I don't chase it. Cause I used to. I used to be like that. But I would just, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta meet the celebrity. I gotta do. No, I'm not chasing it because then I'm looked at as a and I'm just speaking for me and, and my industry. Then I looked at, then I'm looked at as a novelty. You know what I'm saying? I'm looked at as a thing. I'm not looked at as a person that has integrity, that wants to genuinely help people. You know what I mean? That wants to help people to heal and grow. And, you know, yes, I don't mind doing celebrity readings. I love doing those, but I also want to help people out. You know what I mean? And be like, no, honey, you don't have to do this by yourself. You got me. I'm, I'll walk with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to hold your hand, but I'll walk with you, you know, and give you the guidance that you need, not that you want to hear. You know what I mean? So it's just, it, it makes me think about that. And that can, and like, like that poster said, that can be in any business. That could be if you're an accountant. That could be if you are um, a publicist. That can be if you are you you work for Bank of America, Verizon. It doesn't matter if you're trying so hard, but at the same time you sacrifice it. You're basically putting yourself, your whole entire being, on the back burner just to be in with the in crowd. And then when you look back on your life, you have nothing to show for it. And then to top it off. You know, they didn't want to say this, but he, because they said that when Mr. Leon Talley passed, that he passed from a heart attack, when in truth, he died from COVID. You see? And it's like you died by yourself. You had no one to help you, you know, or at least that's what, you know, I've been told by people that knew him, that he just, he, he died by himself. He died alone, you know? And I'm not saying that there's, I'm not saying that, that being alone is a bad thing. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying establishing genuine connections, genuine friendships. These, because you, because trust me, you think, oh, and, and trust me, I was one of these people. I used to think, oh, I'm going to go to a network interview and I'm making friends. Bitch, them ain't your friends, okay? Those are not your friends. Those people just trying to make money, okay? I had to learn that. I had to learn that, you know what? Just because a person is friendly doesn't mean that that's my friend. You see what I'm saying? I had to learn that you know, they're trying, they're trying to get to where they want to go. They're trying to, and, and, and most of the time, they're going to use what you do, whatever it is you do, to bring up their stock value and vice versa. So I had to learn that. And it's like, wait, I really don't have any friends. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can honestly say, I don't have any friends in, in Houston. Any genuine, like, real genuine friends, I don't have any friends here in Houston. I have associates. I have people that I know through association. I have people that, well, no, I, I'll take that back. I have one and he shall remain nameless. He's a great artist. Um, but I don't have what I would call, like aside from that person, I don't have genuine friends out here. And I've lived out here for almost, it'll be four years 
in April. You know what I mean? And it's not like I haven't tried to foster connections and relationships. But then you have people that always, they're trying to, to get something either from you or, you know, they want to use something that you have or, or vice versa. You want to get something from them because I'm not going to lie, I've been guilty of that myself, you know, and it's like, no, that's not, that ain't going to help you as you get older and, and down the line because I don't care what anybody says. We need people, not in the sense of a, a codependent, unhealthy way, but in the sense of, you know what I mean? I need a friend. Let me call somebody somebody that I know I can talk to. Let me, let me, um, you know, foster this relationship with this beautiful man that genuinely likes me and he's not just using me for my body. You know, let me, let me get to know myself, you know, and do the inner work and do the shadow work that I need to do, you know, to figure myself out and heal my inner wounds and heal my inner child and my inner adolescent and things like that. But oftentimes we don't do that because we're so focused on getting to the next thing, the next thing, the next that chasing that bag, securing that bag. And Andre Lee and Tally, I'm telling y'all, for my gay men who are 30 plus, for my gay men who are 40 plus, listen to that story. That's a cautionary tale because he worked so hard. Because if you don't know, he was creative director from 1983 to 1987. That man worked his ass off and had nothing to show for it in the end. Only to be ousted by a bitch that probably didn't give a shit about him. It probably still doesn't. But knows what to say when them cameras get in front of her face. You see what I'm saying? But you have a people, you have all these contemporaries in, in your industry that praise you and lauded you and said, oh, you with this and you with that when you passed. But when you were living, they didn't do anything for you. Not saying they because let me make that very clear. Probably a few did. But then I also would imagine that he probably was the kind of person that he didn't even he didn't even take the help that was given to him, probably. You see what I mean? So it's like, let that be a lesson to you. Chase the bag. Chase it all you want, baby. Go ahead. But in the interim, foster relationships that you need. Because trust me, once you get that bag and you secure that bag, you're going to go, is this it? Is that all it? Is it? Is this it? You know what I mean? You and you and Or you get that house or you buy that car, you lose that 20 pack. You're going to go, okay, I did it. Now what? Trust me. So I'm saying this to all my gay, black men of color. It doesn't matter what color you are. But to all of us who are on that hustle, chase that bag. But also maintain relationships. Call your friends. Call your family that you're close to. You know what I'm saying? Call your family of choice. Talk to them. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to be another Andre Leon Talley. And I'm not going to lie. When I read that, I that just, it, do, it did something to me. And it's been on my mind for a while. I just didn't know how to come and talk about it. But I figured I would get it off my chest. So now if this is where you guys come in. What do you think about Andre Leon Talley? Not about his work, but just how he was done. Are you experiencing this yourself? As you are in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, how are you maintaining, how are you fostering healthy, wonderful, beautiful, abundant relationships? What are you doing? Leave your comments below because I really want this. I want this to be a discussion. It needs to be talked about. So until next time, it's me, Leo Brown. I know I ranted, but I just had to get off my chesticles, honey. Um, <laughs> So it's me, Leo Brown. I hope you guys are having a great start to the week. And I will be back later on this week with my celebrity readings. I think I'm going to do actors this week. I think. I think, yeah. I may do like triple threats. So we'll see. But anyway, have a wonderful, wonderful evening and a great week. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.